got two NLDS playoff games, and I got two bets for you. Let's talk some baseball. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I am your host, Steven, and I am back to talk some playoff baseball. That's right, baby. We got two NLDS games between the Braves and the Phillies and the D-backs and the Dodgers. It's been a wild playoff already. I mean, we just saw the Rangers take two games. That's right. Baltimore could not wait for playoff games. They host two games for the first time in a long time. And the Rangers come in and just mow them down, scoring 11 runs today. Holy smokes. That was wild. Rangers look like a team on a mission. I'll tell you that. That offense is something special. So that's not over yet. I do have over four and a half games. Not looking good in that series. I need the Orioles to win the next two to win that bet. But uh, anyways, quick reminder. Monday Night Football preview and best bets and the week five recap talking takeaways and all that. That video will be coming out later, so stay tuned for that. I'm ready to talk some baseball, though. I took a day off on Sunday for baseball. It was all football, but now it's time to get back to it. So before we start this video, hit like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, comment down below to help that algorithm and help this channel grow. Cannot thank you guys enough. Um, In this video, we got the good hitter matchups still. That's right, only two games, but we still got some good ones. I got the pitcher report for the four pitchers today, and then I got your best bet. So let's get into it. No more mumbo-jumbo babble at the beginning. I want to talk some baseball, and it starts with that bets recap. All right, we had two bets for Saturday games, and we went one and one. Over eight in the Astros and Twins. That was like a 5-0 game, and then the Twins scored four late in the game. Ended up losing six to four, ten runs. We get the over. Merrill Kelly under 15 and a half outs, guys. It just didn't work out. Honestly, the D-backs absolutely throttled them. They were up like 9-0 to zero after two innings. You know, that may have affected it. The Dodgers and the whole stadium was just dead. The game was already over. I don't know if it affected it or not. Either way, it was a loss. That wasn't an excuse. It was just a loss. So he went over that, and the Dodgers just pretty much gave up in that game. So Sunday, no bets. Playoff futures, as you know, 2-2 two and two on the series bets, and playoff bets so far are 3-5, and five, down 1.7. Let's get a couple winners today. But first. Let's talk some good hitter matchups. All right, those are the six that we have for October 9th, and a lot of them are in that Phillies-Braves game. Travis Darno, 8 for 21, a double and one home run versus Zach Wheeler. Bryce Harper, 9 for 30 with two doubles and two home runs versus Freed. And then we got Trey Turner, 14 for 35, two doubles and a home run versus Max. As you can tell, these guys have faced each other quite a bit, obviously being in the same division. Then JT Riamuto, 14 for 40, two doubles, one triple, and three home runs versus Freed. And then the last Philly, Castellanos. How about eight for 13 with a double and a bomb? That is not too shabby. And then we end it with Will Smith getting jiggy with it. Na, 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 na. That's right, six for 16, one double, and one triple versus Zach Gallon of Milk. So those are the good hitter matchups for game two in the NLDS. And now it's time to talk a little pitcher report. All right, we got some good pitchers on the mound today. Zach Wheeler versus Max Freed. Freed's been hurt a lot this year. We're going to dive into each of these games in just a little bit. Uh, but as you can tell, Wheeler, almost 200 innings. Max Freed was only able to pitch 77.2 innings. I had him on my fantasy team. He absolutely killed me. Uh, just two good pitchers, two good K rates. Max Freed walked a little more than he's used to. Um, pretty similar hits per nine innings. So it's a good matchup. These teams have faced each other quite a bit. Um, that was quite the beatdown the Phillies pitching put on the Braves lineup in game one. That's for sure. Next one, Zach Allen and Bobby Miller. That's right. Bobby Miller is on the mound, the rookie for the Dodgers. Gallon 4.14 expected ERA, 3.47 ERA. Second half wasn't as kind to him. He was um, up there as an NL Cy Young favorite, kind of slipped a little bit. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that also with a 26% K rate. Bobby Miller kind of solidified himself. Um, you know, I'll let you know what he did down the stretch, but the second half of the year was definitely better for him. Um, he started finding the groove, so uh, and now he's home against the D-backs in a must-win situation, I think, for the Dodgers. So that's a good hitter matchup. Take a screenshot. Hopefully that helps you out. But it's now time for the best bets. All right, game one takes us out to the ATL. We got the Braves hosting the Phillies for game two of the NLDS. Atlanta money line minus 162. Phillies money line plus 136. Over under of eight runs. Let's talk game one real quick. Somehow Ranger Suarez in this Phillies bullpen held one of the best, most historic offenses in baseball history to zero runs. Welcome to playoff baseball. Uh, this Phillies team had now has now won four of the last five games in the playoffs versus the Braves. They are not afraid of them at all. 
Um, when you're down 1-0 in a best of five, this becomes a must-win situation, I believe, for the Braves. Doesn't mean they're going to win, but it just it is a must-win. So I'm going to get to my bet in this game, and it's a team total, baby. We got the Phillies team total over three and a half at minus 118 on FanDuel. All right, we just talked a little bit about it on that hitter matchups. They know how to hit Max Freed, but the Phillies team as a whole has faced Max Freed 206 times. That's right, 206 plate appearances. And they are hitting a ridiculously good 317 versus him. So they know how to hit him. Um, and you, like I mentioned in those hitter matchups, four of their best hitters are combined 45 for 118 versus him, hitting 381. That's right. Four of their like top six hitters in the lineup are hitting 381 versus him. Now, I think Max Free is a good pitcher. He's only thrown 77 innings for a reason. He's been hurt all season long. He hasn't pitched since September 18th now. So... When you're dealing with all these injuries going in and out, it's harder to find a rhythm. And now you haven't pitched for three weeks and you're being thrown into a playoff game against a team that knows how to hit you pretty well. It's not going to be easy. I think the Phillies can get to him. Um, and his only start with this versus the Phillies, he did decent. Five innings, one earned run. Um, you know, it doesn't tell you a lot when I guess it's only one start. But um, I think he could go five innings in this game. Like I said, he's been dealing with injuries. Um, that means four innings of the bullpen. You know, at least three innings of the bullpen, probably, unless Free just somehow keeps his pitch count really low and just mows him down. Um, but I think with them having three to four innings off the Braves bullpen and how well they are success, how successful they are against Max Freed, I love this over three and a half. And by the way, they you know this, they are the road team, which helps. They get nine guaranteed at bats. So give me the Phillies team total over three and a half at minus one eighteen on FanDuel is my best bet. Let's move on to the next series. All right, we go out to Los Angeles where the Dodgers are hosting the D-backs in game two of their series. We got Dodgers money line at minus 155 and the D-backs money line plus 130 with an over-under of eight and a half runs. Wow, what a beatdown the D-backs just put on the Dodgers. Unbelievable. If you had Kershaw under one and a half outs recorded, you won. That was unbelievable. Uh, Kershaw has just continued to struggle in the playoffs. I don't know what his deal is. Um, I know he's not in the prime of his career, but even in the prime, he would dominate in the regular season and then get hit in the postseason. It is bizarre. No words to explain it because he is a Hall of Famer. But uh, this is a must win for the Dodgers, and this D-backs team is not afraid of anything in the playoffs. They are now 3-0. and So my best bet in this game, Mookie Betts, one plus hit, and the Dodgers money line at plus 104 on Fandle. That's right, a little same game parlay. Uh, let's talk Bookie Betts. He's 5 for 18 versus Gallon. Decent, you know, nothing unbelievable, but he's faced him a lot. He's familiar. Bookie is hitting 334 at home this year. He loves hitting in Dodger Stadium. Now, I know he went hitless in game one. I get it. The whole team just sucked. It was a dead game. Um, but he has only went hitless eight times this after being hitless already. I didn't say that right, probably. But he's only had eight instances this season, the entire season, where he's gone hitless more than one game in a row. That's absolutely insane to me. So I expect him to bounce back in a big game. Zach Allen, 4.42 ERA on the road and giving up 101 hits in 108 innings. He is very, he turns into kind of an average, he's still a good pitcher, obviously, but he turns into an average, above average pitcher when he's on the road this year. Um, I don't know why. It just seems bizarre because he was a Cy Young favorite, but that's just how it is. Um, and the Dodgers have hit him pretty well. I mean, we're talking in his two starts, the Dodgers. 11 earned runs in 10 innings. That's a big part of why I'm taking the Dodgers money line. Dodgers offense as a whole, fourth WRC plus in the majors versus righties and the fourth best at home also. Um, I also like their team total over four and a half if you want to do something a little different. But um, I went with this instead. Four and a half, you know, you, I, I think they're only going to have eight at bats, obviously, because I'm picking them to win. But let's talk Bobby Miller on the other side. He's been in good form. He had a 3.19 ERA in September. He's missing more bats, getting more Ks also. Um, in the two starts versus the D-backs, he had one bad start and one good start. Overall, he threw 12 innings and gave up four earned runs. So obviously, he's fared a lot better than Gallon's 11 earned runs to the Dodgers in 10 innings. So um, with his form, I think he can slow this offense down just enough. It's hard, It's scary to say because this D-backs offense, when I watch them, they just keep crushing every pitcher they face. But I, just, I am expecting this Dodgers veteran team to come out in a must-win situation and take care of business. So give me Mookie Betts one plus hit. Let's just get a hit to lead off the game. Dodgers take care of business. Get to Zach Gallon like they have uh, in other starts this year. And I like those two together at plus 104. So those are my two best bets for today, Monday's games. Now let's check out that bets recap. All right, we start with the Phillies team total over 3.5 at minus 118. And then Mookie Betts one plus hit and Dodgers money line at plus 104. Both of those are at FanDuel. 
there it is, guys. And if you're wondering why we didn't mention the Twins and Astros game, that's because as of recording this right now, the game is just starting, so I don't know what happened. Um, other than that, just a reminder that NFL Monday Night Football Preview and Best Bets video will be out soon. This is such an exciting time in sports. So if you haven't already, hit that like button, help our channel grow, go leave a comment, just say hi if you want to do that. So anyways, hope everyone has a great Monday, and we'll talk to you soon.